Hey, night students. Here we go. Quick review for today. You got a test opens up tomorrow. And you got a full day to take it. Relax. Here we go. All right. This test. Actually, before we get to the test, you have a couple assignments that are standing out there. One, you've got a vocabulary for this unit that you could look at. You have a telescope assignment about the difference between the Hubble and the James Webb. And you have the big, long, huge test size project, the moon observation. You need to go out, remember, every two or three nights and take a picture of the moon and do that for a full month. Well, if it's going to take you a full month to just gather the pictures, don't wait. Go ahead and get started. We're almost to a new moon. Right now, you'd have to go out, not early in the morning, but you'd have to be out by eight, nine o'clock at the latest to catch the last little sliver of the moon before there's a new moon and then it'll restart a couple days later. Okay. All right. But you could look that up online if you need to, where the moon's going to be locally, or you could use the Stellarium. The Stellarium web is linked in Canvas. Just look down that left-hand toolbar there and you should be good to go. Okay. Review for today. All right. Big picture. Big picture. Let's break this down. Radiation, the electromagnetic spectrum. Two, black body objects and how they emit light. Three, spectroscopy. Four, telescopes. That's it. Focus on those four things. You are good to go. All right, so electromagnetic spectrum. This is radio waves. It is microwaves. It is infrared radiation. It is Roy G. Biv. All the visible light that we see, it is ultraviolet light. It is X-ray and it is gamma ray. That is in order from long wavelength to absolutely minuscule wavelengths. All right, so radio is super huge, long wavelengths. You got giants, long CB antennas or radio antennas on your car, all the way down to gamma rays, which are very small in wavelength. But in frequency, they're very the exact opposite. Radio waves have low frequency and gamma rays have incredibly high frequency. Exact opposite in order, okay? Energy, radio waves have low energy, gamma rays have high energy. Energy depends on frequency. So that's usually why we list them in order from left to right, low frequency to high frequency, low energy to high energy. So we start with radio, even though it's a long wavelength and the wavelengths shrink, Usually your x-axis doesn't go down, but your x-axis is going up if you mention frequency or if you mention frequency or energy. Sorry about that. Blank for a second. Okay. Um, all of those, remember the, the biggest difference. What's the, if I ask you, what's the difference between green and yellow? Like from a physics or a, a science perspective, not an art perspective. The difference between green and yellow is wavelength, is frequency color it's the same stuff right it's not made of a material it's a wave it's an electromagnetic wave a photon coming at you traveling striking reflecting it's a wave of energy i mean the, the difference between green and yellow we don't feel it we don't see it. we it's just the same stuff but the difference between x-rays and ultraviolet radiation they're just two different colors the difference between am and fm radio is a different color it's a different frequency it's a different wavelength all of this stuff is light all of it it's just colors that our eyes don't see radio is a color you can't see microwave is a color you can't see it's green Maybe some other alien out there can see it and, you know, I don't know. All right. It's the exact same stuff. It's just a different color. Our eyes can only see Roy G. Biv. Okay. Moving on. Keep this short. Black body radiation. You take a solid object and you get it crazy hot. It starts to glow red. Okay. Think of melting metal, right? You're heating up the, the burner on your stove. It's going to glow, and as you barely heat up, it's going to go from a dull red all the way up through an orange into a yellow into a super bright hot, okay? That's black body radiation. 
does not depend on what it is. It depends on temperature. The higher the temperature, the closer the bluer, okay, the, the further to the right on that electromagnetic spectrum chart. So low temperatures, red, orange, yellow, white, hot, blue, hot, that we might have heard of in a flame or think of, because it's not emitting one color. The peak color, the color it emits the most of, moves to the right on that chart. And also, not only just the color changes, but the amount of light that is emitted increases. So temperature will, you will increase the total amount of light emitted, but you will also increase the, the peak frequency that's emitted from a black body object. Okay, look into that. Spectroscopy, one of the most important tools in astronomy. Actually, it's an important tool even here on Earth to learn what things are made of. But with spectroscopy, you can learn what a star is made of. Our sun, we're never going to touch. Where you can't go up and take a scoop out of it and you know bring the sample back and bring it to a lab and look in it. Not going to happen. But we can learn what's in the star through spectroscopy or a gas cloud out in space or this distant thing. We can learn all of that through spectroscopy. So spectroscopy, there are three types of spectra that are emitted. There are in continuous spectra, emission spectra, and absorption spectra. You need to know the difference in the three. Continuous spectra relate right back to that black body because a black body, by definition, emits a continuous spectra. It emits all the colors, uh, infrared heat through Roy G. Biv. Our eyes just see the Roy G. Biv, and it just, the color emits that emits the most of changes as it, you increase temperature, but it's still emitting all the colors under that curve. Okay. That's an emission spec or that's it wrong. That is a continuous spectra is a black body object. An emission spectra is a single thing. Think you've got a cloud of dust out in space and it's hot. So you've got this hydrogen gas and it's hot and you emit the light. The hydrogen atoms are excited. The electrons jump up to an orbital, and then when they fall down, they emit one specific color of light or several specific colors of light, depending on the ladder. You've got to go to and look at the atom. Remember we talked about the atom and the structure of the ladder and how every element's unique in these different ladders. Sometimes, you know, it's missing a rung here and there. The rungs are spaced differently for different elements. That means that electrons can be here, here. You can't stand on the second and a half rung of a ladder. You were on the second rung or you were on the third rung or you were falling. There's no, there is no in between. You can't float in between the two steps on a ladder. So neither can an electron. Electron is on this energy level or it's on this energy level. Light comes in, it gives the electron energy. It has to jump up. Then later the electron gets tired. When it falls back down, it has to, that energy is conserved. That energy goes away. That energy is light, but it has to be the amount of specific amount of energy between these two rungs. And that amount of energy is a specific color. That's where emission spectrum come from. It's also where absorption spectrum come from because it can only absorb light if it's going to give it exactly the right amount of energy to jump up to rung three. If it gives it too little, it won't make it. It just the light goes through. If it gives it too much, the light goes through. If it gives it exactly the right amount, it jumps up to rung three. It will absorb that light coming in. Now it's hanging out up here. And later it will fall and emit that light in a different direction. You got to know about that. So continuous emission and absorption spectrums. All right, last thing, telescopes. What's the difference between a reflector and a refractor? Because one uses glass and lenses and the other uses a big mirror. Okay. Uh, what are some of the different shapes? Why do we put them on mountains? Do we put them on mountains? Why do we put them in space? Why are they in, not in the middle of a city? Okay. Where are they? Do they all uh, view light? Or do some of them view uh, radio waves? Can some of them see infrared or gamma ray? Could some of the telescopes, like does, does uh, diameter matter? Does size matter of a telescope, okay? 
those are the things to think about. So big picture, radiation, electromagnetic spectrum, black body radiation, spectroscopy, telescopes. Those are the four big topics to think about. You guys are ready for your test. Have a great day.